Hello and welcome to Participant Directed Goods and Services Training for changes to the PDGS Waiver Service effective July 1, 2022. My name is Lisa Cursillo and I'm a Medicaid Health System Specialist with the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. I'm joined by Joelle Barath from the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities and Allison Zuhoski from the Franklin County Board of Developmental Disabilities. This presentation will cover changes to the PDGS waiver rule, PDGS as a new service available through the Level 1 waiver, a review of participant-directed goods and services, and finally, how to access additional resources and supports. Joelle will now begin our training. Thank you, Lisa, for that introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Joelle Barrett and I am the Division Manager of Service and Support Administration with the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities. I am here today to talk about the participant-directed goods and services rule changes and the reason for those changes. So why revise the PDGS rule? Participant-directed goods and services has been a service available under the SELF waiver since its inception in 2012. Although this has been a valuable service to the people who have been able to use it, it has been challenging to authorize for SSAs due to the criteria and wording in the rule. It has been confusing to individuals and their families due to a lack of clarity and understanding on what PDGS could be used for. With the addition of this service to the Level 1 waiver, this seemed like a good time to review and revise the rule. The goal of these changes is to clarify and simplify the process and remove confusion for SSAs, individuals, and their families so that they can have a better understanding of this service. The rule reference 5123-9-45 is in the heading of this slide if you would like to review the rule language later. One of the first changes to PDGS is that this service will continue to be available to individuals on the SELF waiver, but will now also be available to people who have a level one waiver. A significant change is that language in the rule has shifted away from ensuring that the item is the least expensive option available. We have had various levels of understanding on how to figure this out over the years, and it has been an area of frustration for both SSAs and the people we support who have had SELF waivers. SSAs will no longer be required to provide quotes or cost comparisons. Another important change is that the term medical necessity has been removed from rural language. Ensuring that an item or service purchased through PDGS met medical necessity was an often confusing concept for teams to understand. The focus now will be that the participant directed good and or service will meet the needs of the person and decrease the person's need for other waiver services advance the person's participation in the community, increase the person's safety in their home, increase independence, or improve, maintain, or assist the person in developing skills. The focus is on assessed need. The SSA leads the team process to conduct discovery and assessment to determine the needs of the person and how PDGS can be used to meet those needs. There should be a clearly identified link between the assessed need in the PDGS item that has been purchased in the Individual Service Plan, or ISP. If this connection is present, this will support the authorization of PDGS. The definition, participant directed budget, has been added to the rule, which is an important piece in clarifying and promoting self-direction. The definition identifies the difference between the person's overall waiver budget from the portion that applies to the participant directed services for which they will have budget authority. The impact of these changes, including how we have discussions about cost effective services, should help the person understand their budget and how they are spending their money. Another important change is that there is no longer a requirement that all county boards have a cost comparison and review committee process for all PDGS requests. In the past, in order to be in compliance, county boards developed committees, checklists, or processes to review all requests. Having these in place has contributed to a cumbersome process that has also been difficult 
for SSAs to navigate and challenging for individuals and families to understand. The new rule does not require county boards to have a review process in place for all PDGS requests. However, it is recommended that county boards will have their own review process to review PDGS items or services that cost $500 or more. Each county board will need to decide the most effective way this can work for them. There's also clarification in the rule of items that will still require approval by the Department of Developmental Disabilities. This includes generators, fences, play sets, home modifications over $10,000, and other items that are available with other waiver services through Medicaid state plan or health check or educational benefits available through the person's IEP. This slide shows the updated list of items that are not permitted under participant directed goods and services. Many of these have remained the same, but we've included internet service and items of general utility to this list. Hi, my name is Allison Zuhoski, and I am an SSA supervisor in Franklin County, and I will be talking about participant directed goods and services being added to the level one waiver and what PDGS is. So effective on July 1st of 2022, PDGS can be added to a person's ISP and payment authorized through the financial management service. Within the level one waiver, there will be an annual cap of $2,500 for PDGS. Within the self waiver, we will maintain no cap. What is participant directed goods and services? It's a service available through the level one and self waivers that promotes independence and inclusion and supports a person to achieve the things that they want. It includes services, equipment, or supplies that are not provided through Medicaid state plan services, health check, or another waiver service. It can help meet a person's needs when they do not have personal funds to purchase the item or service. It's not readily available from another resource. It will link directly to the person's ISP to a need that is clearly identified throughout the assessment process. It will help a person directly. It will not be purchased for those that are providing supports to the individual. And of course, it will ensure health and welfare. PDGS is required to do at least one of the following decrease the need for other Medicaid home and community-based services, advance participation in the community, increase safety at home, increase independence, improve cognitive, social, or behavioral functions, or assist to develop or maintain personal, social, or physical skills. And these are all things that we saw in the previous PDGS rule. PDGS cannot be a specialized service. Again, this is still the same. And this is defined as any program or service designed and operated to serve primarily a person with a developmental disability. Programs or services available to the general public are not specialized services. And if there is a question as to whether PDGS is specialized, the director of DODD may make a determination and this determination is not subject to appeal. So budget authority and PDGS. Budget authority is used when a person purchases equipment, services, or supplies under PDGS, and through budget authority, the person decides how much to spend on certain waiver services. Providers of PDGS equipment, services, and supplies are not required to be certified, and they cannot charge more than their usual and customary rates. PDGS purchases cannot exceed Medicaid guidelines and waiver funding limits. And finally, payment for these purchases is made through the Financial Management Service. Thank you, Allison and Joelle, for your wonderful presentation. And thank you to everyone for watching Participant-Directed Goods and Services Training for Changes Effective July 1, 2022. The Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities has several resources available on our website to support teams with this service please contact us at waiverpolicyta at dodd.ohio.gov with any questions.